Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I'm gonna talk for like an hour here, so I don't know who and who on earth is interested in this. I don't know how we ended up here. I don't know how I ended up just showing you my records, and now I'm just like making this like a like a diary. Don't know how that happened, but here we are. There we go. Uh, as always, I can't really respond to comments. I'm sorry, I can't respond to comments. I just I'll get distracted, and I will never get through this ever. Um, so here we are, the final artist. I, I, I tried to narrow it down to the people that meant the most to me. Didn't always be consistent with that, but um, <clears throat> there was no question. Uh, Billy Joel, um, as an artist and writer, had the most impact on where I ended up in life, right? Yes. Um, so here we go. If you don't like Billy Joel, you might not want to watch this, but you might want to watch it, and maybe I can convert you, because Billy Joel, like most artists, uh, the really good stuff, is the stuff that's not on the radio. That's generally the truth, especially with singer-songwriters. The stuff that's really good generally isn't the stuff that's on the radio. It's not the stuff you know. I got a Spotify I got a Spotify playlist that I made that I'm gonna attach to this when it's done. That's all of his album cut songs, like really good songs. Um, and I, I found myself putting basically putting every song on almost all of his records that weren't hits on this. There's like 75 songs, but I'm gonna attach it so anybody can listen to it. Because Billy Joel's one of those artists you really should dig into, really dig into. So I'm just going to start like I do always from the outside, my experience, and then we'll get to the ranking of the uh, of the albums um, from from worst to best. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I'm going to ramble, so you don't have to watch anybody. I'm going to do this for myself because I only get one chance at this. Uh, I don't remember exactly how Billy Joel came in my life. I think that... Uh, when I was 13, 14, I fell in love with the piano for some reason. I just did. Like, the piano was what I, I just wanted the piano. It's like a magnet. Um, so any songs with the piano in it, I was, I was in. I was, I was, I was, I was very excited about it. So I think, I think the song Piano Man hooked me, I think. And my mother had the cassette tape of An Innocent Man. And I used to play that while I would cross-stitch. You did not mishear that. Um, when I was like 13, 14, um, uh, and I didn't know much about it. I don't know why she had that tape, looking back, really. But The Innocent Man would play, and then I'd flip it over. So I knew that record, and then I knew The, uh, the Piano Man. I remember calling the radio station, asking him to play Piano Man. Um, and then for Christmas, I don't know what year. I was 14, 13, 14. I got Billy Joel's Greatest Hits on tape from my aunt. Um, I say aunt because I'm from the Midwest. Um, and I listened to that tape of his Greatest Hits over and over again in the car at home songs i had heard in the peripheral but didn't know were billy joel when this when the song pressure came on i always i'd heard that song before i thought pressure was by devo because of the keyboard riff in it i just i this is billy joel this is a billy joel song this one ding 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 that's just blew my freaking mind but i listened to the greatest hits tape over and over and over and over again loved it uh, a lot of songs i didn't know um Little side note: The Greatest Hits tape didn't have "Scenes from a Time Restaurant" or an entertainer, the entertainer on it, because it wouldn't fit. So um, there you go. I had those tapes, and then right around this time, also I've mentioned this before, Columbia House was a thing. Columbia House Records, where you can get ten CDs for a penny. So all my friends had CD players before me. All my friends had CD players before I did, because I was gonna hold out and not do it, because I didn't want to replace all my cassette tapes, because I had tons of cassette tapes. So my buddy Sean and Paul. Both had Billy Joel records because Billy Joel was Columbia artist and Columbia Records did this thing. So, this also was about the time the Stormfront came out. So it was a kind of a this in about a year or two, all these things happened that turned me on to Billy Joel and going, Jesus, this is amazing stuff. So, uh, my my buddy's got The Stranger and uh, Piano Man, those records, and they were on a lot whenever we would hang out and have sleepovers and and, and stuff like that. And I was like, this is great stuff. So, um. I eventually uh, got a CD player and started collecting Billy Joel records. And I don't remember what order I got them in. I only remember the last one that I got. Um, but I started getting them. And I was already kind of a music junkie at this point. And this stuff was, the Billy Joel stuff was, at the time I wasn't really aware that it was different than everything else that I was listening to. I was just like going, this is great. This is great stuff. Um, sorry, I don't know how interesting this really is. Um, But it, it, I loved all of it, and the piano was just got me. So I spent my summer of like when I was 15 years old, I had a five disc CD changer, and I had all my Billy Joel records. And I would randomly pick five Billy Joel CDs, put them in my disc changer, hit shuffle, and sit at my keyboard, my little five octave keyboard, 
and just play along with Billy Joel records and sing for hours because I loved it. No other reason. Just I love it. And I played with my little really remedial musical education of nothing, of no lessons, of no, of like here's F and C and B flat and that's all I know. Like looking back, I'm, it's comic how badly I played these songs, but I enjoyed it. That's what matters. People ask me for piano lessons and I go, if you don't enjoy it, it doesn't matter. Gotta enjoy it. I loved it. So I played through all these records and I, I collected them all and it just, yeah, I just can't explain it. And it, it influenced me to want to write and I don't know. There's not, a, I'm going to talk a lot about Billy Joel and I'm really sorry about that because it, as a singer songwriter, it was more important to me than anybody else. Uh, and as I got older, I appreciated it even more. I, at the time, I just thought, this is great music. I didn't think this is rock. This is, I just thought, this is Billy Joel. It's great. I love it. It makes me happy, and I enjoy the crap out of it. was too young to understand how com com complex some of the music was and how different a lot of the styles were. I mean, really, really the styles were. So um, let me go through the, uh, I'm, I'm going to get to the ranking last, I promise. I'm just going to show a couple of the other things I have. Uh, by the way, showing how important Billy Joel was to me in high school. This is going to be backwards because of the way that uh, Facebook Live works. But this, I painted this when I was 15 for art class. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little messed up. But yeah, I was 15. I painted that. So, kind of an influence. That's tw I, I can't believe I still have that. I went over and got that this morning from my parents' place. Um, but yeah, wow. Uh, if you, if you can see it close up, it's the hair is a little weird, but there you go. Um, all right. So there's that. Let's talk about the other stuff that is not, um, uh, full on albums because you I only count the full albums when I do the ranking. Can't help it. That's the way my brain works. Here's this book I bought one day when I was a teenager. Don't know where I got it. It's a goofy little book, but there it is. All right. Yeah. Um, here are the video collections. We got the uh, essential videos, and then we got Live at Yankee Stadium. I know he's got a lot more, but I don't have them. I don't get much out of the live stuff, really. Um, if you watch this, you know that. I don't get a lot out of live recordings or live concerts, I just, I, but I have these anyway. I have them. Um, now we get into the music. The big collection here is the, what is this? Oh, look at all that I got. Oh my gosh. This is the complete greatest hits thing, this four disc whatever, uh, greatest hits part one, two, and three, and then like a, a little, the, the master class thing that he does. Um, so there's this, which is just called the Complete Hits Collection, limited edition, whatever. Limited edition, you can all get this right now, I'm sure of it. There's that, there's this My Lives thing that came out like eight, nine, 10 years ago, 10 years ago. I was very excited about this, a lot of unreleased stuff on here. Interesting to nerds like me, but actually a, a handful of good songs that should have been on records. Uh, what was that, Nobody Knows But Me? That's a cool song, um, but this My Lives collection really interesting. If you're a big fan, a big fan of Billy Joel, there's some stuff on here you've never heard. The demo for Piano Man's on here. Songs that eventually became uh, Scenes from Time Restaurant, the original version of Uptown Girl. A lot of really interesting stuff on here if you're a big fan. Um, and then I got the 30th anniversary. What is this? 30th anniversary of the Stranger collection, which is just all about the stranger with new essay and pictures and a, and a live thing blah 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 blah. it's just a celebration of the stranger there you go um also um all right let's move let, let me show this real quick i don't know what in the hell this is or where i got it but it's this weird disc i got billy joel sings there's songs on here that aren't on any there's like it's like an old collection it's a collection of stuff he did before he was billy joel there's songs your cat Hotel St. George, Land of Despair, Further Than Heaven, Country Boy, Night After Day. And they're co-written by him. Like, it's just weird. The quality's awful. But there's like 10 songs on here that I, are not on any Billy Joel records that were written and recorded before he made his own records. It's very strange, but I found it somewhere. Uh, this is the same thing. A handful of songs on here. Um, Night After Day, Land of Despair, 4 O'Clock in the Morning. I don't know, but they're Billy Joel songs that aren't on any of his records. Um... Here's Billy Joel with Attila. I can't count Attila in the countdown, but there it is. Um, rolling home. So that's the Attila. Um, oh, the Attila and the Hassle. So there's a bunch of stuff there. Billy Joel was in a band called Attila, a heavy metal two-piece band. Anybody know that? Who he played Oregon, the other guy was a drummer, and they were a two-piece heavy metal band. No kidding. Um, but that's, that's a, I found that at a Best Buy, and then this also. 
it's the same, but not. It's got different saws on it. But there's the Attila stuff that I have also because you got to have that. Um, let's see. And then real quick, we're getting there. I promise. Let's do the... Um, well, let's, let's do this. I'm going to talk a little bit more. By the way, uh, I'm going to see Billy Joel um, with my mom, who's never seen him. It was my birthday present to her. Kind of to me, too. Um, yeah. Wonder Woman with your so Yeah, Wonder Woman. That's the only song in there I remember, too. Uh, me and my mom are going to see uh, Billy Joel. Me and the family are going. I'm very excited. Mom's never seen him. And uh, it was my birthday present to her, so it's going to be fun. Also, real quickly before I get into it, um, a couple little, little... Side notes about, and I get past the personal stuff. Uh, this I, this is just a little, like diary of my life and how Billy Joel's been a part of it. When I first got the record, Allentown, uh, excuse me, the Nylon Curtain, and he says the F word and Laura. Me and my buddies just listen to it over and over again at my buddy Brian's house and think that was hilarious. Um, when I had to do a report in college on who I would make president, I just wrote about Billy Joel as an excuse to write about Billy Joel. Um, my buddy Sean and I were driving next to each other on a road, and we were both listening to scenes from an Italian restaurant on the same radio station at the same time. So he was looking at me, I was looking at him, parallel, and we we're like s singing the song. It's stupid and, and not not real dangerous. We weren't stupid, but I always remember that. Sean probably forgot that, but I thought it was cool. Um, uh, uh, that's it. Oh yeah, one time I was talking to my mom, and when I was very young, and mom said something like, "The simple lines have all been taken." I was like. That's from Billy Joel. She goes, I know, because you listen to it all the time. Because I had to go into my room all the time. So my family knows these songs also. Just because they had to live with me. And um, before school and high school, I used to listen to When in Rome. Because it would put me in a good mood. When in Rome from Stormfront Record would make me happy. So that was like something I would do. Does that matter? You don't care. All right. Back to the stuff. Uh, CD single of All About Soul. I bought this because it's got uh, You Picked a Real Bad Time on it. So I got that. Um, greatest... His Greatest Hits Part 3. I got that. There's the ticket stuff from when I went and saw him when I was a kid. Um, I've only seen him three times. Um, the Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2. I listen to this. My God. I can't. I can't even. Uh, I, there's nothing I can say about these. You don't know. I just listen to this over and over and over again. You know, I tried to paint this. Yeah. I tried to paint it. Um <laughs> I'm a nerd. Uh, but there's a great song here, The Night Is Still Young. I love The Night Is Still Young. It's only on The Greatest Hits Volume 3, uh, 2, so get that. Uh, I don't count live albums in my countdown, so I'm just going to show you the live album. This is the Russian live album uh, when he went over there in 1987. And I also have the anniversary collection of that, which is like a documentary, which is really, really interesting um, about how that show was done. And, and I don't want to tell you. It's really cool. It's remastered and got the documentary about it. So that's cool also. I also can't bring myself to include this in the countdown. So here's the album of classical works that he did. Um, it just doesn't... It, I, can't, I can't put it in there because it's a completely different kind of music. So I can't put it in the ranking. So there's, uh, there's the Fantasies and Delusions by Billy Joel. There's that one. And then, again, I can't bring myself to include live albums in my rankings but that was very difficult on this one because i really wanted to include this one songs from the attic because it's not a traditional live album it's a collection of live performances that are actually in most cases better than the studio records they put this out after the stranger became a hit in 81 this came out and they went back and dug well they put this out after the stranger 52nd street and glass houses and then they put this out digging back and grabbing songs from his four albums before the stranger and put them out on this so that he could maybe give them new life um, and to this, I mean, my favorite versions of almost every song is these songs, uh, except for the ballad of Billy the Kid. I still like the, the studio version of that, but this is really good. I wanted to include it, but I couldn't bring myself to do it because it's the same songs. You know, it's got this song, but that's got this song and I couldn't, it wouldn't work in here, but there's that also really awesome. Also, here we go. We're almost there. How long have I been talking? 15 minutes. Balls. Okay. Also, every one of his records, I looked before I did this, every one of Billy Joel's albums is on um, Amazon for between 5 and $6. That's it. At most, it's $6. It's criminal. Criminal. So you can get Billy Joel's entire catalog for like 
65 dollars it'll show up at your house that's unreal i actually did that earlier this year because they're all remasters now everything on amazon is remasters with new artwork and new inserts and everything so i went these are not in order this is my remasters i bought them all again because i wanted to get the remaster version with the different artwork on it because i had to have it and I, bought, I just went, I just broke down and bought the entire Billy Joel discography all over again. Uh, and it was like 70 bucks. I even rebought the greatest hits because I'm stupid because the remasters, remasters. But they got different artwork in the back, some of these. So I needed, I needed it. I had to have it. That's not what I'm used to. So uh, all of these are, four, are five or six bucks on Amazon. Just, there's no reason on earth that you love me. If you have ears, what is that line? This is a, I just thought of it. This is a line in uh, 30 Rock, wasn't it? If you have two ears and a heart. You like Billy Joel? I got two ears and a heart, don't I? But I think it was my... Who was? That wasn't Billy Joel, though. But that's a great line. If you have ears and a heart, get them all. All right, here we go. I'm going to rank the Billy Joel records. And forgive me for going on and on. Because I'm kind of going to miss this. Like, when this is done, this is kind of done. Oh, by the way, very quickly. When this video is done... I'm going to have a short epilogue of stuff that I've bought since I started doing this. I'm going to turn the phone off and I'm going to turn it right back on and do like a little five minute thing. Um, but it doesn't, it's just me showing what I've bought since. Because that was the whole point of this is my record collection. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to rank these. There's no way I can get through this without upsetting any Billy Joel fan, which is kind of like a double edged sword because um, Billy Joel fans are the only ones that are going to be watching this really. And those are the ones that are going to upset by my choices because my top few are not going to be what anybody probably agrees with but it's also a personal thing and how it, these songs and records affected me in my life so that's how it works billy joel has 12 studio records i'll talk about if you only talk about billy joel and elton john i hear i'll uh, uh billy someone asked about billy joel and elton john uh i'll make this a 30 second answer billy joel is much much more uh, better me than elton john I like Elton John. I respect Elton John, but he needs Bernie Taupin to write. Elton John has moments of brilliance, and he has moments of garbage. Elton John has albums, full albums, that are total crap. From start to finish, crap. Billy Joel doesn't have one bad record. He's got 12 records, but they're all great. Um, so when I put this, when I show you my first one, my bottom of the list, I still like it. All right? Even my, my least favorite Billy Joel record... I like seven of the songs. I like seven of the ten songs. Um, so I still like all these. They're all great. Um, so, here we go. Don't be mad at me. I still love these records. Number 12. Shut up and rank, Jason, right? I could talk more about the Billy Elton thing, um, but I'm not gonna. Billy Joel's a better songwriter. Sorry. Musically more diverse. Shut up, Jason. Number 12. Here we go. Number 12. River of Dreams. Like I just said, I like seven of these songs. I like this record. It's just when you're talking about... It's like cookies. Everybody likes cookies. You like M&M cookies or chocolate chip cookies or macadamia nuts. They're still all delicious and wonderful. It's just a slight preference, okay? So, River of Dreams. This came out. I remember the day I bought this. I'll be honest. When I heard this single, after digesting all of his 70s and 80s stuff and all this brilliance, the first single was... The song River of Dreams, and I was like, what is this? It's just like a simple chord progression, a simple title. I was really kind of like surprised at how elemental, element, elemental, whatever, basic it was. For a Billy Joel song, I was like, this is the single, but I guess it worked because people still request it, and it's been 23 years. What do I know? Um... Um, but there you go. Anyway, th that song came out. I was so excited about a new Billy Joel record. I know now that like he put it out partially out of artistic uh, need and partially because he was in debt. Like he was like way in debt, so they made another record to tour. Uh, Christy Brinkley painted the cover. You guys probably know that. Um, this is still great. There's just a couple songs here I never got into. I couldn't get into Blonde Over Blue. Couldn't get into Minor Variation. Actually, just those two I didn't really care for. Great Wall of China's got great chord changes. Uh, I love Shades of Grey, even though that's pretty simple. You can hear his voice has really changed here. This is the last record he made, by the way. This is his last album, 1993. Um, and uh, 
all about soul, which is probably the most intentionally written radio song maybe ever. I mean, it's just meant to be a single. You can feel it's just supposed to be, I need a radio hit. Here's All About Soul. There's a version of All About Soul called the Motorcycle Song on uh, on this, which I prefer. I think it's a better lyric. Um, but Lullaby, Good Night My Angel's on here, which is one of the most beautiful songs ever, right? Of course it is. Uh, I love 2,000 Years. And, uh, you know, the last song and the last record, you can't read it because it's backwards. My, you know, uh, famous last words. So, uh, good, very good, but there's better stuff. Uh, so my pick, and, is, you know, it felt, I'm going to shut up. Because when I do album reviews on all these, I'm going to take them all day. I said I was going to do it, but didn't I? There you go, number 12, River Dreams. Number 11, Cold Spring Harbor. I like Cold Spring Harbor. This record has a special place for me. When I first got this record, I listened to it over and over again. It's very sparse. It's kind of dark. Um, but I really loved it. And you can, it's, this is his first record. This is his first solo record, 1971. Um, there's moments on here. It's just very, there's hardly any drums. It's just mostly a piano and singing. And there's some very good stuff on here. But it's, he's 20, I was born in 49. He's 23, 22, 23. Uh, <clears throat> and you can really hear a little bits of what he's going to be. The first song is She's Got Away, which is still on the radio today. Um, but the version you hear on the radio is the songs in the attic version. Um, that's the one I prefer. So that's good. You can. The only song I don't, there's only one song here I don't like. I like nine out of ten songs. I do. Uh, I don't like You Look So Good To Me. Oh, you look so good to me. With my eyes open wide, I can see. But I love Tomorrow Is Today. I used to play that over and over and over again. I love Why Judy, Why, Judy, Why The Fall Into The Rain. This is a really nice record. It's it, that's what it is. It's nice. It's a little more one dimensional for Billy Joel. Maybe that's why it's so far down the list because he gets into other shades and flavors later on. But this, um, it's good. I did. Thank you, Pete. I did. I always do. Um, there you go. Uh, by the way, the two songs in here you might know are "She's Got Away" and "Everybody Loves You Now," and the versions you know are from this because this is better. Uh, there you go. Number 11, Cold Spring Harbor. Number 10, I'm going to upset. I know there's one person, and this is their favorite, so I'm sorry. But for me, still good. Number 10, Street Life Serenade. Good record. This is his, his third album, uh, 1974. I remember when I bought this. This was the last one I bought, by the way. This completed my Billy Joel collection. This is the last one I got around to getting it. I remember walking to Streetside Records with like singles and crumpled singles and like change in my pocket. Like, like three miles to go to the record store to get this and walk back home and then listen. Oh, my gosh. This is the struggle. The struggle as a young music lover in the 90s. Tough stuff. Um, still, I like this. There's only one song I don't like, and uh, that's the last of the big time spenders. I don't like that song. That's it. Nine out of ten songs. I love them. I love Street Life Serenade. Los Angelinos is great, but it's better on this. Um Great Suburban Showdown is appropriately mundane for the subject matter. It's great. Rupi Rag. Uh, is Rupi Rag sped up a little bit? It's not quite in pitch, is it? I don't know. Uh, Roberta. I still like Roberta. The Entertainer's on here. Uh, weekend. I always love the Weekend song. Seems like a throwaway, but I like the Weekend song. Uh, Souvenir. Great little song. I love Souvenir. And um, uh, the Mexican Connection, which is, he has two instrumentals in this record, which is interesting. But that's really cool, too. I used to play this all the time on the piano over and over and over again. By the way, in addition to the stuff I've shown you, I have other bootleg stuff in my computer without cases of CDs of, like, recordings and, uh, like, live stuff. And I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff. Uh, there you go. Number 10. Uh, still good. Street Life Serenader. Serenade? Sorry. Street Life Serenade. Good record. Number 9 for me. Piano Man. Still love it. All right, but uh, here we go. Nine for me. The song I don't like is Worst Comes to Worst. Don't like that song. Don't get it. And actually, I was never much of a fan of Captain Jack. I know everybody loves Captain Jack. I don't hate it. It just kind of plods on for me. But um, whatever. I love If I Only Had the Words to Tell You. Great melody in If I Only Had the Words to Tell You. Great bridge. Very Beatles-esque. By the way, Why Judy Why on Cold Spring Harbor is just a Beatles song. I mean, he's very, very influenced by the Beatles, and it pokes his head out here and there. Um, Traveling Parallel, and Piano Man's on here, so there you go. Um, Ain't No Crime, I used to play this record all the time. Ain't No Crime is great, You're My Home, I like the record version of that. Ballad of Billy the Kid is majestic and huge, and 
Love that song. Uh, Stop in Nevada is wonderful. Somewhere Along the Line is a lot of fun. Um, but I love this. Again, there's no bad Billy Joel record. This is just number nine for me. But I, I, over and over and over again, I listen to this album. And um, somebody should do a, a drinking game and how often I say and um. Really. Uh, there you go. Number nine for me is Piano Man. Now is the first moment when I'm going to really upset a couple of you Billy Joel fans. And I'm very, very sorry. I'm just coming to this from my angle and my heart and my experience. And one of the greatest songs ever written, ever, by anybody is on this album. But as a whole, I still love it. Like I love them all. But there were other ones that moved me more. So I'm sorry. Number eight for me is Turnstiles. I know, some of you just got really mad at me. I still like it, all right? I still think it's great. I never really was a fan of Say Goodbye to Hollywood. And as much as I appreciate James and the chord changes in James, it's not my favorite song. I still like it. And there's only eight songs on here. But New York State of Mind is on here. New York State of Mind, one of the greatest songs ever. Ever. That song, that song will outlive all of us without question. Um, I love Miami 2017, but it's much better on here. Much better on here. So is Say Goodbye to Hollywood is better on here. Uh, I've Loved These Days is better on here. Um, still a great record. I'm not crapping on it because it's number eight. Great album. Um, all You Want to Do Is Dance. I know some people don't like All You Want to Do Is Dance. I like All You Want to Do Is Dance. I think it's a great little goofy song. Uh, Summer Highland Falls is on here. Also better on here, I think. Um, so good, good album. I just had others that moved me more. That's all. Number eight for me is Turnstiles. Don't be mad. Again, I love it all, okay? Um, continuing with the disappointment of the Billy Joel hardcore fans. How long have I been talking? A half an hour. Uh, number seven for me is The Nylon Curtain. And again, I love this record, all right? This is Billy Joel in 1982. Um, he's really kind of dipping his toe into it. It's really Beatle. Influence. You can really feel the Beatle influence on Surprises and uh, Scandinavian Size. The way he's singing, he's really trying to John Lennon his voice. Um, but the chord changes are amazing. In us, uh, I love, I love, love. She's right on time. She's right on time. Should have been on the radio. That is a brilliantly written song. The chords. I don't even. The chords during the the verse fall chromatically. During the first half of the verse, and then the bass. Oh, it's just awesome! It's such a brilliantly musically, musically written. I can't talk today. Musically written song. Uh, She's right on time. is a wonderful, wonderful song that it should have been a hit. Uh, Good night, Saigon is on here, which you know is a great song. Pressure. I always love pressure. I never loved Allentown, but as I've gotten older, I've, I've grown to really appreciate it. This album, by the way, was written in sequence. He intentionally set out to write an album in sequence. If I'm wrong about any of this trivia, please tell me. This is just what I picked up, and I don't remember when I picked it up. But this, he wrote Allentown first, then Laura, then Pressure, then Goodnight Saigon. Like, he wrote it in in sequence, from what I understand. I can't stand a room of our own. As much as of all the titles of maybe any song ever, I identify with We All Need a Room of Our Own, because I believe that in life. You need a space that's yours. I never liked that song at all. Weird. But I like the rest. Scandinavian Skies is trippy, but it's good. Uh, and Where's the Orchestra is a great song. Where's the Orchestra is wonderful. And the little reprise at the end of Where the, Where's the Orchestra to Allen, because it's the last song. The reprise where they start playing uh, the Allentown theme to tie in the record. Awesome. Um, but this is a great record. I mean, I know I'm gushing about it, and it's number seven. They're Like I said, they're all good. Number seven for me, The Nylon Curtain. Um, great record, though. Very Beatles esque. Very keyboard heavy. Probably his most keyboard heavy record, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but good. All right, number six for me. Most Billy Joel fans do not like this record, but I like it. Don't know what to tell you. Number six for me is The Bridge. Uh, a lot of people crap on The Bridge. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's too pop. Maybe it's because it's too polished. Um, the only song on here I don't like is the single. I didn't really like Matter of Trust. Matter of Trust for me was very repetitive and not very interesting. Some love is just a light, da da da. Call me as it began with a passion. It's the heart over and over again. Um, but I love Runner on Ice. Run 1986, by the way, 1986. Um, Runner on Ice, most of you 
will know this, but Running on Ice is a great song. It was intentionally written for Sting. Billy Joel sat down and wrote a song for Sting, and it's Runner on Ice. And if you listen to Runner on Ice and put it in your head that it's supposed to be for Sting, you can totally hear it. Um, I love Runner on Ice. Great album opener. Uh, this is the Time is a beautiful song. This is the Time has one of my favorite bridges. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier. Billy Joel is the king, the king of writing bridges in songs. He writes wonderful bridges. Almost, almost every one of his songs has a bridge, and they're almost always brilliant and genius and wonderful. The bridge in This Is The Time is beautiful, and the chords change at the end. It's really wonderful bridge. He writes incredible bridges. And actually, speaking of Elton John, here's a little trivia. Elton John hardly ever writes bridges. Hardly ever. In fact, of every Elton John song that you know that's ever on the radio, the only one I've ever been able to think of that has a bridge is I Want Love. And I think maybe there's one other that I can't think of right now. Oh, Sad Songs. Sad Songs has a bridge. Other than that, every Elton John song that you love doesn't have a bridge. There's no bridges. I don't understand that. And it still works, though. So what do I know? Um, Baby Grand is beautiful. Elton John. Uh, Elton John. Billy Joel and Ray Charles, Baby Grand. How great is that song? I like Modern Woman. I know everybody flacks on Modern Woman, but I like the chord changes. Big Man on Mulberry Street is great. Temptation, it's kind of gotten weak over the years, but I like that. That was written about his daughter, by the way. Temptation was written by his daughter. I love Code of Silence. Code of Silence, by the way, has the distinction of being the only song on any Billy Joel record, studio record, that was not solely written by Billy Joel. Co-written by Cindy Lauper, who helped with the lyrics. The only song that's not only written by Billy Joel. And I think Giving Closer is a great song. So I like this record all the way through, everything but the but the uh, the single. I think it's great. Totally 80s. All right. um, but yeah, there's, I used to play this record all the time also. Love it. Code of Silence is great. All great, all great. Love that record. Even Billy Joel hates this record. Billy Joel hates this record, but I love it. So who am I? I don't think Billy and Joel and I would get along either. I don't think we would. Um, all right, top five. <clears throat> My fifth favorite Billy Joel record is Stormfront. I enjoy the hell out of Stormfront. This might be because it came out when I was in high school and I listened to it over and over again. This was uh, 1989. Uh, this is when he changed producers from Phil Ramone, no longer Phil Ramone. He went to Mick Jones from Foreigner, the, the guitar player principal songwriter for Foreigner produced this song and tried to bring the more rock element out of Billy on this album. That's why it's a little more rocking. Um, a little more. Um, that's why it's a little more polished sound. Uh, I only didn't like, and I know this is crazy because everybody loves this song. I didn't really care for State of Grace. I didn't really like that song. Don't hate it. Doesn't move me. But I love this record. I don't like We Didn't Start the Fire either, but I tell you what, it's a novelty. No one did it before, and it gets requested every day, and it's on the radio somewhere right now. Um, Down Easter Alexa, I was really happy that later on became a hit because that was one of my favorite songs on here, and it wasn't a hit initially, but as time went on, people went and found that song, and now it's people know it. Um, Shameless is beautiful. It used to drive me crazy when I was in high school, and people would walk around with uh, Garth Brooks Shirts that said shameless on it. Billy Joel wrote that. Third. Um, I go extreme. Stormfront is great. Leningrad is a beautiful, beautiful song. Love Leningrad. Um, when in Rome. I like When in Rome. Oh my God, my phone's getting dark already. This can't happen. Oh no. Oh man, is it getting hot? Oh man. All right. Shoot. All right. We're going to keep at it. Uh, when in Rome, he doesn't like And then... Um, one of the greatest songs ever, even it's Billy Joel's favorite song that he wrote, or one of his favorite songs, And So It Goes, is on this record, which was uh, written in 83 for, um, oh, what's her name? What's her name? The Body. The, uh, what's her name? Oh, I can't think of it. All right, well, he wrote Ellen McPherson. He wrote And So It Goes around the time he was dating Ellen McPherson. That happened. Uh, so there you go. I love this record. Number five. Now I'm nervous because my screen's getting dark and uh, I think the phone's going to overheat. Sucks. Um, all right. Did I have anything else to say about that? I don't know. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let's move on. All right. Number four for me. 
Glass Houses, stellar album all the way around. This is Billy's probably most uh, rocking album of all of them. Uh, I love every song, right? Yes, I do. Love every song. Even the French one, love it. Took me a while to grow up. One of the best songs he ever wrote that should have been on the radio is on here. Um, Sleeping with the television on. Sleeping with the television on has radio hit written all over it, but it's never released. Great, great song. Um, you may be right. 1980. This is 1980. You may be right. Sometimes a fantasy. Don't ask me why. Still rock and roll. Me. All for Lena, which I listened to over and over and over again. My God, loved All for Lena. And I listened to All for Lena for the first time. I went, that sounds like Runaway by Bon Jovi. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? But this came out first, of course. Um, I love Close to the Borderline and Through the Long Night. Through the Long Night is a Beatles song. It just sounds like a Beatles song. It's the harmonies, the chord changes, the melody choices. This is a wonderful, wonderful album. No fan of classic rock should not have this record. Glass House is number four. Got to listen to this over and over again. I didn't play piano this one very often because there's very little piano on this record, actually. This is more guitar heavy. Uh, somewhere on my computer, I have a whole collection of like demos and offs and just him noodling around with ideas and it's really interesting stuff. I'll give, uh, Pete, I'll give that to you if you want to hear it. Bill, if you want to hear that, I'll, I'll send it to you. Interesting stuff. Like almost all these records. But number four for me is Glass Houses. Don't know what else to say about it. Why is my screen dark? All right. Here we go. Um, if I get caught off, I'll just pick this up in a little bit. I don't know what to do. Here's where I'm going to upset a lot of you. But this is the truth for me. My number three, and I love it, love every song. My number three is The Stranger. I like The Stranger. I love The Stranger. It might be because I'm kind of sick of a lot of these songs now because I've been playing them for 15 years. Um, but I still love it. I love everything about it. Just uh, a couple of records touch me more. Uh, I love that Vienna is now in the popular consciousness because... Just like uh, Down East Alexa, that was not a single. That was not anything. It just, it came out, and I always loved the song, Vienna. Love Vienna, and it was one of the songs I always said should be a hit, but wasn't. But now it kind of has taken on a life, which is great. Um, but Everything You Know by Billy Joel is on here, right? Moving Out, Stranger, Just the Way You Are, Seems Time Restaurant, Vienna, On the Good Day Young, She's Always Woman to Me. I like Get It Right the first time. I think that's a great song. And then uh, Everybody Has a Dream. The last song is actually a beautiful song, uh, written in 73. I don't know why I only found a home on this record, but there you go. There's not much I can say about The Stranger you don't know. This is like his greatest hits record, right? It's his Sgt. Peppers, it's his whatever. Um, I told you guys you were going to get mad at me. I can't help it. This is the way I feel. I love it. Like I said, I still love it. It's just how it is. And it might be that I've just, I, I could, it would be all right with me if I never heard Moving Out or Only the Good Die Young again in my life. The chord changes, and she's always a woman uh, to me, by the way, is beautiful. Um, I don't really think I have any stories, and I don't know how interesting my stories are. And my phone could die in a minute, so there you go. Uh, but there you go. Number three for me is A Stranger. Suck it. Don't care if you don't like it. I'm just being honest. Um, I tend to do that. My favorite record by most bands is not the most popular. But still love it. Number three. All right. Now here, <laughs> my number two is going to mess with all of you. But I cannot help it. It is the way that I feel. It is how much I enjoy this record because it's how much I feel Billy Joel enjoyed writing and making this record. My number two Billy Joel record is The Innocent Man. Suck it. I don't care if you like it or not. I love this album because of everything that he has ever recorded, this has got to be the most joyful, fun record he ever made. There's no question about it. He is uh, in love with Chrissy Brinkley. He's reaching back into the 50s doo-wop that really inspired him. Um, and it's just a joyful, fun album all around. Vocally, I don't think he ever sounded better in terms of control and range. He's like 34, 35 here. And it's, in most cases, whenever vocalists are really sound best is in their mid-30s. And his vo his vocals are amazing. By the way, speaking of his voice, uh, he enunciates like nobody else. He enunciates, he really gets the words. Like on that song, She's Right on Time, you know. It occurred to me when I set up my Christmas tree. He really, if you listen to him sing, he says all of his L's, all of his R's, all of his consonants. He enunciates better than maybe any other singer. He really 
says the words. Um, but I, list, I love this record. Um, Easy Money, so much fun. And then it's a man is wonderful. Uptown Girl, so much fun. This Night, one of my favorite songs ever. This Night is beautiful. Tell Her About It is so much fun. The Longest Time is so much fun. Christy Lee is so much fun. Uh, Leave a Tender Moment Alone has great bridge and chord changes. So this is just joyful. All the way through. Upbeat. Fun. He sounds great. Love it. Love it. It's a throwback in the 80s to the 50s. How weird is that? But for whatever reason, it really works for me. It just makes me happy. Maybe that's why I love it. So for me, number two, An Innocent Man. That's right. Who am I? What does that leave? Anybody know what that leaves? Anyone know what my number one album is by Billy Joel? Someone's got to know. You got 10 seconds. I actually have an album review of this on my YouTube channel. By the way, if you like my rambling, since this is going to be over after today, I got like 50 album reviews on my YouTube channel. Number one for me, a Billy Joel Records, my favorite. That's right, 50 Second Street. 50 Second Street. This is one of my favorite records of all time. I remember the day I bought this. I went up to Streetside Records. I bought this and Van Halen's Four Unlawful Common Knowledge on the same day. Um, I'm getting jerky now because my phone's dying. This really upsets me that it's dying here on my last thing. Um, here's why I like this record. This is maybe the most diverse album he ever made. You jump from hard rock of, of Big Shot to the balladry of Honesty to the pop of My Life. Then we're at Zanzibar, which is kind of jazz territory. And then Stiletto, which is kind of, I don't want to say R&B, but it's like groovy. Uh, Rosalinda's Eyes, which kind of hints at some Latin stuff. Half a Mile Away, which should have been on the radio. Half a Mile Away is a wonderful radio song. A uh, big brass section on that. It's just upbeat, pop, and fun. Until the night. Huge, soaring, six-minute ballad with a string section and wonderful sax solo. And then just that little song, 52nd Street, to kind of tie it in a little bit. This record jumps all over the place. When I was a kid, I didn't even realize it. To me, it wasn't this kind of music, this kind of music, this kind of music. To me, it was just Billy Joel music. 1978, the, uh, the record he used to follow up, The Stranger, and hits all the notes for me. I love everything about it. Um, I don't know what they'll say other than that, other than this is the best one. If you, if you have a couple of his records, I'm sure you have The Stranger, it, just get this one and give it a shot. The chord changes in some of these songs and the subject matter and how he writes about different things and different stories. He's one of the greatest American songwriters that we, we, there's ever been. Just he, He's a self-contained unit and he, his lyrics tell stories. His chord changes are like nobody else. This is my number one, my favorite Billy Joel record. And again, I love them all, but this is my favorite one. Um, and I guess that's it. There's the 12 Billy Joel albums in order me. These are all the actual CDs that I went and have when I was, you know, this is the same records that 14, 15, 16, 17 year old Jason would just hold and, and gush over and, and put in my, you know, this is the thing that I put in my five disc player when I was a teenager and would play over and over again. And, that's how I spent my summer. Um, and then, you know, here again, here's the remasters. I got the remasters of everything. Listen, he's one of the greatest singer songwriters, artists of all time. His music will outlive all of us. His entire catalog is available on Amazon for like 60, 70 bucks. Get it. Get it, man. Just get it. You have to. Um, what did I miss? What did I miss? I guess not much. Um,. All right, I'm kind of sad now, right? But um, I'm gonna post all these on YouTube. I did 25 of these videos and I'm gonna collect them all and put them all up so they'll be there in case you caught a little bit of this, a little bit of that and you can see all this stuff. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna turn this off and give the phone a few minutes to, uh, to cool off and then I'm gonna go through the stuff I've bought in the past three months. Just show it to you because I haven't listened to any of it yet. Um, but I guess that's it. I love... Uh, you guys that were watching, thank you very much. I'm going to have one of these coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to rank, like I just did, here's number 12 to 11, all the albums I listened to in 2016. There's about 90 of them. And, I'm just, and I've already ranked them from my favorite to my least favorite of all the things I, uh, I exposed myself to this year. And I'm just going to do that. It's going to be quicker. I won't ramble so much because a lot of it I want to much to say about. But I'm going to do it for fun. Um... But other than that, I don't know if I'll do another one of these because there's no reason to. But I'll be doing album reviews and I'll keep up on that. And if anybody wants to talk about anything, we can do it. Um, 
I, can't, I there's no way to pick a favorite Billy Joel song. It's it's like what's your favorite piece of pizza you've ever eaten? You can't do that. But thank you. Um, I made a playlist though. Uh, it's on Spotify. I'll put it on here of all these album cut songs that are you've never heard that you can absorb and um and um uh, try to listen to. That's it. I will be at the Billy Joel concert in uh, seven weeks with my mom and dad, and um, it's gonna be fun. And I'm just gonna sit there and watch and go. Ah. Uh, I'm seeing Don Henley, and then two days later I'm seeing Billy Joel. That's pretty cool. There's nobody left on my bucket list. Uh, pretty much, There's like four people. Now I'm just talking because I don't want to hang up. No, you hang up first. No, you. All right, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Uh, I will say this real quick. Billy Joel, the existence of Billy Joel is why I get to have the life I have. I love Billy Joel. I played piano. Maybe I want to play piano. I learned a bunch of songs, and it led me into this passion for music and the and the draw of the piano, which, which somehow got me into my job, which is playing piano for people. Um, and my love of Billy Joel really connected with the, the piano players. Um, and that's it's been nice. It's been nice to find a kinship with other people because I was just a dork in the Midwest and, and nobody understood what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, if it weren't for Billy Joel, I'd probably still be a, I'd probably still be a dispatcher in the Midwest because I, I just wouldn't have chased him like I did. Uh, that's it. Stop talking, Jason. Stop talking. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, in a couple minutes, I'm gonna put a little epilogue on here, and that's it. Thank you very much. Hope I haven't upset anybody with any of these things. It's just my point of view and. It's been fun. Oh, real quick. Here's my website. jsmusic.com. I got four records of my own that I wrote and recorded. It's not Billy Joel stuff. I ain't that good, but we can do. All right. If anybody ever comes up with a good topic they want me to ramble about, I'll do it. Maybe I'll tell the story someday how I got my job. Mm -hmm. Holy luck. Holy luck. Seven different things had to come into place in just the right way to get you. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry the video's been jerky. Bye. I'm back in five minutes. Bye, man.